Hey and welcome back to another Dark Vault tutorial. In today's video we're going to be looking at how to render a 3D and also a 360 degree video. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and open up a 3D scene. Now normally when you're modelling things you probably just model what's in front of the camera. In this example we need to model all around the camera and make sure everything's covered since it's going to be rendered. So the resolution, it needs to be in a 2x1, so I'm using 2048 by 1024 but you can increase that if you want. Also make sure it's 100% and also the frame rate can be anything you want. Now let's select the camera and we want this to be around head height. It should be around 1.7 meters on the Z. Let me just change this. But since when I scaled everything or when I modeled things I didn't uh, model it to scale exactly so yeah, I need to change mine back to 2.3. But again just make sure it's around head height. Also for the rotation make sure you're pointing in the direction you want. Uh, this is where it's going to be starting off. If we go to the render layers, go down here to views, if we check that box, um, it's going to be rendered in 3D. If you don't want to render 3D, we can just uncheck that box and you don't need to worry about it. Now we've, we want to render it in 360 degrees as well, so go to the camera. And uh, we will be changing this to panoramic in a moment, but um, we do need to change one of the settings here. Uh, change this from millimeters to field of view. And then we want to change the field of view to 90 degrees. So select this, change that to 90. Maybe just zoom in a little bit and rotate the camera around just to see how it looks. Again, you can play around with this value, but 90 works. Yeah, it looks fine. So now we can change it from perspective to panoramic. And then we just want to change this type here. Select this and change it to equi rectangular. So now once we do that, uh, every time we render, it'll be rendered, um, it'll look kind of distorted, but that's exactly how it should look. These settings will be fine as standard, uh, these ones here. But if you do need to change it, say for example the clipping, you can do that if you need to. Okay, so down here, these settings, so we need to check spherical stereo. Again, this is for the 3D. If you don't see these options, you didn't check the views in the render layers. Now this convergence plane distance, if we play around with it, you can see kind of what it does. If we just rotate around there so you can see, apologies, let's just uh, hide these. Okay, so we can see the camera in front of the camera is like a, a plane. Um, this doesn't get rendered, this is just to, to show you where it is. And what this plane does, any, anything behind the plane will uh, look further away, and in front of the plane will look uh, more 3D, if that kind of makes sense. Again, it's just for the 3D thing, but I'm not really going to be using it in this example. Okay, so go back to the render panel. Want to make sure it's uh, video, so change that to FFmpeg video. And we want to change this from individual to stereo 3D. And then we also want to change this one uh, from anaglyph to top bottom. Okay, these settings work for me uh, for this example upload into YouTube and Facebook. Um, if you need to change it, go ahead and change it. So now I'm going to hit uh, render, see what this looks like. So if you're doing it in 3D, it will first render the left and then it will render the right side. So like this. So the image is distorted, but that's exactly how we want it to look. So now we want to render this out. Uh, we've made sure it's an FFmpeg video, but we're going to go to encoding. And then the presets. We select this preset here. I'm going to use H.264 in MP4 format. And if we set the output as well, that's important, we need to make sure we know where we're saving it. And then you can go ahead and animate. So you want to render this out. Um, I've set for 250 uh, frames, and it's only 50 samples, so it's quite low. You might want to increase some samples, but yeah, you can go ahead and uh, render that out. So now you've rendered that out, we need to inject some data into it to make sure it works as a 3D or a 360 degree uh, video. So what I'll do is I'll throw a link in the description, you can go ahead and go to this website yourself. So we need to actually download a spatial metadata injector. Essentially it'll just inject some data into our, our videos and it'll work. So just get that downloaded. I'll throw a link in the description, you can go ahead and download that. And the way this works, very, very easy. We just need to open up our video. So press open. 
and it should look like this one here don't worry about the image to the right so your video should look like this on the left go ahead and open it okay so if you see this line here if you're rendering 3d you need to check this one as well but since I didn't render the 3d um, I don't need to do that and then just press inject so I'll come up with this dialog box so you can go ahead and rename this this will be the new uh, injected version of it so you keep the old version and you also save a new version and then it's done so now that's injected you can go ahead and upload it to YouTube or Facebook or wherever else you want um, yeah you're done so hopefully this tutorial helped um, as always thanks for watching